Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and YCS New Jersey is in its final swing of things. They are playing out top 8, top 4, and then the finals, but basically we have a lot of information that we can go over in terms of the top 32, the top 16, and top 8 breakdowns, as well as seeing what decks were doing well in the later stages of the tournament in the Swiss rounds before we got to top 32. Now, I obviously was not able to go to this event. I did not have any intention of picking up expensive Sky Striker cards and then driving or flying to New Jersey from where I live, so it was just an event that I was okay with skipping out on, but I did want to look at the information we could gather from this event because it is the first YCS that the Sky Striker cards are legal for. It is the first YCS of Dark Saviors format. Now, previous weekend we had some European countries had their nationals, we had some regionals dotted around in the areas, but we never had a big large-scale event until this weekend, so this is the basically premier first event for the Dark Saviors strategies. And so what we have is we have the top 32 breakdown in this lovely pie chart over here, and as you can see, 16 Sky Striker Trickstar decks made top 32, taking up half of the top cut. This was very much the deck to play going into this event. It had some successes in the previous weekend at some nationals and some regionals, it's very much a very simple deck that just utilizes good, just easy interactions, like good plus one interactions. It basically just, you know, both the engines, the Sky Striker engine with engages and Hornet bits and stuff, and the Trickstar engine using terraformings and like light stage to clear out back row, getting the searches for reincarnation, just having good, just standalone monsters that are just simple one for one cards of like you just summon Candina, get a search, like very simple interactions. Uh, these decks pair very well together, and so going into this event, especially with the new time procedure rules, this was definitely a deck that you wanted to heavily consider playing, at least Trick Stars in general, because of the new end of match procedures with how time works, you having access to like this burn deck on top of the generic goodness that is the Sky Striker engine you've got supporting it is also good, as well as the deck is very capable of OTKing almost any stage of the game because of how the Sky Striker cards interact with the Trickstar cards as well. It's very easy for you to establish the Firewall Dragon plus Lily Bell plus Licorice infinite damage loop at pretty much any stage of the game because of how you know the Sky Striker cards influence the Trickstar cards and vice versa. So it's very easy for you to drop that pretty much at any point. So the deck is actually now very aggressive and it lost the weakness that it previously had of Trickstars had a hard time dealing with boards and then doing game through them. Whereas now with that sort of play basically accessible at almost any time during the game, you no longer have to deal with your opponent's board. You just attack them directly for game eight times with Lily Bell with Light Stage up or a few more if you don't have Light Stage up. That is an almost infinite damage loop if you're capable of pulling it off and that is something that is going to be very valuable going into the future of the new end of match procedure as well as something that was very valuable for this weekend. Now it's of note that also in addition to Sky Striker Trick Stars as a pure variant taking up half of Top Cut, two Trick Stars and three pure Sky Striker decks, five whole other decks took up space in Top Cut as well, so Sky Striker Trickstar wasn't all of the Trickstar and all the Sky Scri Striker in Top Cut. It literally was just one variant of the deck that took up half of the representation. And this Top 32 breakdown, at least to me, looks very similar to the YCS Atlanta breakdown from back in February, where that was the first event that Pendulum Magicians with Heavy Metal Foes Electromite was legal, and that breakdown as well had about, you know, just a little bit over half of Top Cut in Top 32 being Pendulum Magicians, but then just a bunch of other decks that were just as as good as playing the game that were capable of playing the game against pendulums as well were just there they were just there taking up the other half of top cut and that's basically what we see here so this seems like just a good formula to follow for first format YCS is essentially just play something that you feel like could top against that deck or play the deck for that event, which the deck for this event was clearly Sky Striker Trickstar. Six Goki made top 32. Now, they stopped differentiating between whether they were Sky Striker Gokis or just regular Goki decks by the time they got to top 32 coverage, so I have no idea how many of these contain Sky Striker cards or not. Up until top 32, they were saying Goki or Sky Striker Goki, but... I mean, there's six Goki decks in Top Cut, so that's pretty good. The deck is a very good combo deck, especially here in America with Link Karibo, which doesn't seem like it would make a lot of difference, but it actually just does. Like I said before, three Sky Striker and two Trick Stars. And then there are two Altergeist decks in Top Cut, so this deck is very underrepresented, it would seem. Uh, I thought this deck was going to perform better, essentially. It seems like 
it has a lot going for it against pure Sky Striker, but I guess the Trickstar build is just better suited at playing against Altergeists. Uh, further testing will tell, uh, honestly. I feel like this deck may have been underrepresented in the tournament, maybe. Uh, I don't know of a lot of people that were playing it. I didn't see it at a lot of the you know post-round uh, top table reports. So, I don't know. It may have just been underrepresented, and these two spots are actually very good in terms of how represented it was at the event. Or it's just it's a deck that just needs to be tweaked a bit more to figure out its niche and how it's going to deal with Sky Striker Trickstar or Sky Strikers in general. One lone ABC Striker list, Calvin Tahan doing what he does best, playing ABC. It's, I mean, whatever, man. One Spiral deck as well, and then one 60-card Pendulum Magician deck makes up the rest of the top 32 breakdown. So these are just some random decks that pilots of the deck that are just, you know, very good with that deck are just securing top spots because they're doing, you know, proper technical play, or they had surprise factor in the case of the 60-card Pendulum Magician deck. I mean, like... 60 card Pendulum Magicians. It's like 60 card Pendulum Magicians, but it plays like Magic Specters, Deities, the Mythical Beasts. Like, it's literally just like every good Pendulum card in the format right now that's at least a plus one or special summons itself. It's a very interesting deck. I uh, don't know if it has to be 60 cards or not, but we could definitely experiment with that a little bit later. But something else I want to look at is I want to look at the top 10 uh, table breakdowns from round 10 and round 11. The last two. Uh, rounds before top cut was decided just to show you guys the breakdown of how things sort of progressed into this because it may look like it's surprising that sky striker trickstar took up half of top cut but it really just isn't if you look at the top 10 tables so the top 20 decks after round 10 you have 55 percent of them are sky striker trickstar and then another 15 percent of them is pure trickstar and then you have some goki decks and some stuff like that and then after round 11 which was the last round before Top Cut was sliced, you have 45% Sky Striker Trickstar, and then you have another 10% Trickstar, and then again you have four Goki decks, and this was the last time they differentiated whether it was pure Goki or Sky Striker Goki, as I said previously, and this one they had three Sky Striker Goki lists in the top 20 decks at the top 20 tables, and only one that was none. But then the rest is just all the stragglers, like the, the 60 card Pendulum deck, the Sky Striker decks that are still there, which is interesting. There was only one Sky Striker deck at the top 10 tables after round 11, but after top 32 was you know broken up, there's three of them. Which, by the way, speaking of the three Sky Striker decks, moving on to top 16, we see a shift around in the things that are being represented. The Pendulum deck is out, the Spiral deck is out, Trickstars are down to one representation, Calvin with his ABC deck is still in, Sky Striker Trickstar is down to seven decks, or 43.75%. There are still four Goki decks, so it went from six to four, and there are still the three Sky Striker decks left in Top Cut. So all the pure Sky Striker decks made it through their top 32 rounds. We lost two Goki decks, and then we lost a fair bit of Sky Striker Trickstars, as well as two Sky uh, two Trickstar decks. No, one Trickstar deck. It was at two in Top 32. So one pure Trickstar deck fell out. And then a bunch of Sky Striker Trick Stars fell out, but proportionally, that's to be expected when you are going into Top Cut with the most percentage of Top Cut. You are obviously going to be knocking out more of these decks than the other ones. So it's not really anything that you can be like, ooh, Sky Striker Trick Star is worse at playing at Top Cut. No, I mean, they're all playing against each other and knocking each other out. Things to consider before you just like jump the gun and go, uh, this deck is worse than this one because this deck is keeping its representation in terms of top cut percentage and this one is not. But then looking even further down the chain, the last bit of information I'm going to share with you today before I stop providing information in this video is the top 8 breakdown for YCS New Jersey. We've lost all the straggler decks. The ABC is out, Spiral is out, the lone Trickstar deck that was hanging on is still out. We're down to two Goki decks, three Sky Striker Trickstar decks, and three pure Sky Striker decks. So all three pure Sky Striker decks that made top 32 have made their way all the way up to top 8. 66% of Goki's representation has fallen off, and a good bit of Sky Striker Trickstar's representation has fallen off, but it is still a commanding position in the top 8 representation. It is a three deck top 8. It's a good combo deck in the form of Goki's. Sky Strikers as a pure deck, which is, you know, about pure raw consistency and, like, just its good stun aspect and all that. And then you have the Sky Striker Trickstar deck. Now, pretty much the main incentive of playing pure Sky Striker over the Trickstar hybrid is that you get access to more of the Sky Striker cards in the 
form of like the big play enablers and big like uh, play uh, play molders like multi roll and stuff like that. Multi roll is kind of an absurd card when you actually think about it. Like just getting all your stuff back at the end of the turn. It's very much like a spellbook of judgment type card. But this is basically all I'm going to give you as far as information for the breakdown of top 32 all the way up through top eight of this event because. I could wait for them to decide top four and the finals and wait for a winner, but I want to just get this video out and I'll probably do a different video talking about the winning deck list, like why it won the event, or maybe talking about the other decks as well, why they were good picks for this event and why they did as well as they did and stuff like that. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Let me know if you guys like this style of video of me just giving you raw information, raw numbers of event results, and if it's something you want me to continue doing in the future, it's probably something I would be more than likely capable of taking on on a consistent basis uh, but other than that as always thanks for watching like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do check out the links in the description down below to my facebook fan page my personal twitch page go follow that if you want to check uh check out live streams that i do at least on somewhat of a regular basis i guess i guess if you can call it twice or three times a month regular there's a link to my patreon link in the description down below if you really like my content and want to help support my ability to continue making it patreon is a great way to do so every little bit helps keep me on this platform and other than that i've also made a new twitter account i have not used twitter before ever in my life and i made an account yesterday if you're interested in following me on twitter where i might you know tweet out things like when i'm at updates at events and stuff like that then definitely check out that link in the description as well but other than that as always, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.